iOS 16 has this neat feature where you can long press on a subject within a photo to pop it out of the background, and then you can drop it within certain apps like Messages to easily share it with friends or family members. It's really cool and works with both animals and humans. Android 13, on the other hand, has this overlay that pops up whenever you copy anything to your clipboard. Comes in handy if you want to quickly order an Uber whenever someone sends you an address, or instantly message a number that you received. That's just a sneak peek at what's inside these two behemoth updates, and trust me, there's a lot more where that came from. In this video, we're comparing iOS 16 with Android 13 Beta 3. I'll discuss what features each OS has that the other doesn't, and talk about any similarities and things that they may have copied over from one another. So if you could please drop a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it since this video did take a, a lot of research and effort to make, and also consider subscribing. I promise quality videos like this are released every week on the channel and you're not gonna wanna miss out. And lastly, I just made some really sick looking widgets that you can use on Android, and some really amazing looking walls that fit perfectly for both Androids and iPhones only on my Patreon page, which you can find down below in the description. Anyways, let's start it off with every major feature that iOS 16 has and Android 13 doesn't. The biggest change that everyone is talking about is iOS's new lock screen, because it's so customizable, and it's unlike Apple to let the users personalize their UI. It's more of an Android thing. Nonetheless, Apple pulled the plug and went all out, allowing you to change the font and color for the date and time, you can add between two to four widgets right below the clock, depending on the size of which ones you choose. There's an entire gallery of unique wallpapers that you can browse through, with some even being live. The astronomy section, for example, lets you have a live view of the Earth, Moon, or solar system with a real-time weather forecast. If you're aware of Apple's Focus feature, a more powerful version of Do Not Disturb mode, it's now tied with the lock screen, so your wallpaper and widgets can stick to a specific profile. For example, whenever I go to work, my lock screen can automatically change to a more professional setting, and then when I get home, it can turn back to something a lot more relaxing and fun. Stay in there, we're almost done. There's this new thing called Live Activities, which shows you cards at the bottom for real-time events, like Uber rides, food delivery services, a sports game, or even workout sessions. I really wish Andrew had that. But my favorite feature of all has to be that you can have a person or animal within a picture appear above the time, giving you this 3D looking effect. It's mind blowing and something that I never thought was possible, but yet here we are. There's just so many things that Apple did to the lock screen, but there's one thing missing. I wish they would have also allowed us to customize the two shortcuts at the bottom of the screen. Other than that, iOS's lock screen is way ahead of Android's and I'm hoping this will motivate Google to bring back widgets to the lock screen. Now that iPhones are tipping their toes in the world of customization, just like Androids, it's time to take the customization past the software and into the hardware side. Every phone I get always has a generic looking design and then I have to pick up a boring looking case to protect it. That's no longer the case, <laughs> get it? Cause with Casetify, the sponsor of this video, I can always have a very protective, slim and customized case. Check this out. Casetify allowed me to add my name to this really cool looking LAX themed label for my Galaxy S22 Ultra. I also added my Hatuman initials to this designer themed classical artwork for the Pixel 6 Pro. And these two other sick looking cases really made the techie inside of me very happy. They're all jaw dropping, but if you're not a fan of the looks, that's okay. Casetify has endless designs to choose from for plenty of phones out there. Each one also comes with a two layer construction of KeyTech 2.0 material to resist large impacts, even up to six feet drops. Pretty impressive, considering the super slim profile that it's packing. You can even get their ultra impact cases to withstand higher drops at up to 9.8 feet. As if that wasn't enough, Casetify uses an antimicrobial coating to eliminate 99% of bacteria, and a good amount of the material within each case is made from recycled and plant-based materials. So if you want a more personalized case that is slim and also has strong protection, make sure to go to casetify.com slash howtomen and you'll even get a 15% discount on any of their cases. I'll make sure to drop that link at the top of the description. Back to the video, iMessage is also far ahead of Google's RCS messaging. We just barely got reactions to messages with simple emojis. And Apple now allows its users to unsend any message or edit any typos. On top of that, when you delete messages or entire conversations, they get dumped into a recycle bin for 30 days, just in case you want to recover them in the future. 
Oh, and my favorite feature of all is that you can now watch a movie or listen to music with your friends in real time with sync controls, thanks to SharePlay being integrated into messages. All while chatting away with those blue bubbles. Android users in America, we're kind of screwed. And since I mentioned SharePlay, it's also been improved within FaceTime, letting you have a whole section to just apps that support SharePlay, just in case you weren't aware of them or want a quicker way of sharing media. Google Duo has similar features to this, but let's be honest, when's the last time anyone has ever said, Google Duo me? Like, never. Usually I wouldn't care to talk about the wallet app, but just like the lock screen, Apple added some pretty cool new goodies. In the US, iOS 16 provides a feature called Apple Pay Later, which lets you split a purchase done with Apple Pay into four equal payments spread over six weeks with zero interest or fees. That's honestly a fantastic deal. Plus, whenever you're about to use an iPhone to pay for a meal, the merchant can just stick out their iPhone and accept contactless payments without needing a terminal. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You'll also be able to share digital keys or IDs within messages, mail, or WhatsApp, and they have something called Apple Pay Order Tracking, which lets users track orders and obtain detailed receipts. On the Android side of things, Google Wallet doesn't have most of those stuff, but it will finally support digital IDs for your driver's license, so you can essentially share your personal information through NFC or a QR code, but there's no way of doing payment installments. I also really love Passkeys, which is Apple's new password replacement tool. I mean, everyone knows the pain of dealing with passwords. You create one and then you may forget in the future or it can be obtained by hackers through a data breach or a phishing attack. It's nasty. Instead, with Passkeys, you can quickly log into an account without needing to type in any information. Just tap a single button and use Face ID to confirm that it's you. Then these keys are stored locally on your phone so that they can never be in a data breach or be stolen by a hacker. I'd say it's the next best security measure next to password managers. And while on the topic of security, iOS 16 can let you quickly revoke access to a bunch of stuff on your other devices remotely. Things like your location, passwords, permissions, and other data, all through a setting called Safety Check. It's an ultimate reset button for anyone with access to your personal data. Perfect for an abusive partner or an overly protected parent. On the flip side, Google also lets you sign out of your Google account on other devices but the menu is still pretty hidden, and even if you do sign out, third-party apps installed on the phone could still be used to access your account. So you'd have to also revoke access to the apps that might be installed on that device. A much more tedious process. Maps on Apple is still far behind Google Maps, but surprisingly, with iOS 16, they've included features that Google Maps doesn't even have. For one, Apple Maps allows you to add up to 13 stops, while Google only allows you to have eight. And when looking at public transport, Apple will let you see the fare prices so that you know exactly how much you'll end up paying for that ride. When a transit card balance is running low, you'll even be alerted within the Maps app and you'll be able to reload it. Pretty cool. On the other hand, Google Maps doesn't show you the fare prices, let alone reload your transit card within the app. Another unique feature that I thought was genius is live text within videos. So let's say I'm watching a tutorial on coding. I can literally pause the video, long press the screen and highlight and copy any of the text on that frame. Pretty sweet. But as of now, it seems to only work on videos within your gallery. I really hope this comes to YouTube because it'll be such a game changer. Android also supports live text through the camera, but it's not supported for on-device videos. The upside is that some Android phones like the Pixel support live caption to generate subtitles for any videos, and iOS doesn't have this. So there you have that. Lastly, Apple took it to a whole other level with parental controls. For one, they made it easier to set age restrictions for apps, movies, books, and music. But what really caught my attention is that children can request more screen time through messages. Then the adult can approve it or deny it. I'm sure it'll be very handy for a lot of parents out there. Anyways, let's flip the script and discuss every significant change that Android 13 has and iOS 16 doesn't. First off, I love that Android 13 allows you to change the language of each app individually within the settings. For example, if I want Amazon to be in Spanish but leave every other app in English, I can do that. It doesn't work for every app and it doesn't support every language out there, but it's a good start. iOS used to have this feature and I'm not sure if it got removed or whatever, but I couldn't find it within iOS 16 for even Apple applications. This next one's really cool. Whenever you receive a notification, you can long press it and open it into split screen with whatever app you're currently using. 
It's great for getting to a conversation quickly. Meanwhile, iPhones don't even support split screen, just iPads. And while on the topic of notifications, whenever an app drains your battery excessively, even if it's in the background, you'll get notified to force stop it. I don't need to clarify how useful this can be, especially if you have old apps installed. Plus, within the quick settings, you can quickly stop apps that are constantly running in the background, like VPNs. Help save battery life. iOS doesn't notify you about any type of battery drainage. They also don't let you control the vibration intensity, and Androids do. With Android 13, those controls have been expanded even further to the alarms and media. This one's a bit small, but on Android 13, anything you copy to the clipboard will be automatically cleared after one hour, so apps can't access or read your clipboard later on. It's great for privacy. And Android 13 can now technically run various Linux software or even full-blown Windows 11. It's pretty insane considering that these are just phones and Windows 11 is a very powerful platform with tons of features. But getting it to work is insanely complicated and very technical. Android 13 has also further improved its Material U design, and I absolutely love it. For starters, the media player has been completely redesigned. It's got a groovy seek bar that jiggles and extends every time you play music, and the album cover fits the entire background. I think it looks a lot cleaner and modern. Wallpaper-based theming also has been improved. For those who don't know, when Android 12 got released last year, it allowed for every system element and apps to match the colors of your background. It was marvelous. But there weren't that many themes to choose from, and a lot of them didn't have a huge spectrum of colors. At most, you can only choose from four colored themes. Now, with Android 13, you can choose up to 16 different wallpaper colors, quadruple the amount from before. And for that cherry on top, there are even rumors that themed icons will extend to other third-party apps, not just Google ones. That way, my home screen can have a uniform theme. So a lot of great advantages found within both OS updates, but there are also a good amount of features that both interfaces grab from one another or just straight up copy. So let's start with the features that Android probably grabbed from iOS. The first big one is the new universal search engine found within the app drawer. It now lets you search the web, brings up system settings, apps, and lets you expand the search to YouTube, maps, etc. It's way better than before, but still, it's nothing compared to iOS's search engine. On iOS, you can bring up Siri suggestions, related settings, contacts, photos, and more. Hell, you can even download an app without needing to jump into the App Store. Everything is done on the search feature. It's next level. Android 13 also came with notification permissions, which iOS has had for years. Before, any app that you downloaded could just start sending you notifications. Now, it's an opt-in process. Thank goodness. There's also a new QR code tile within the quick settings to let you quickly scan a QR code with your camera. iOS has had this within its control center for a long time. The gesture navigation bar used to be slim and mostly out of the way, but now with Android 13 Beta 3, it's a lot bigger and bolder, resembling that of the iPhone's nav bar. And finally, these are just rumors, but Google could end up using a new photo picker that is extremely similar to Apple's file selection menu. It's a dedicated view that apps can use to let you only select photos instead of just bringing up the document picker that we're used to. Plus, Android 13 could let us finally control the LED brightness instead of just toggling it on or off. It's something that iPhones have always had, and a few OEMs have implemented it within their phones like Samsung, but it's not universal on Android, so I'm crossing my fingers for that one. Now, let's switch it to the features that iOS 16 could have copied from Android. First, they allow you to view and copy the Wi-Fi password after verifying you with Face ID. Android has had this for years, and they even allow you to share the Wi-Fi password with nearby share or a QR code. Apple has also created this thing called iCloud Shared Photo Library. Terrible name, by the way. It lets you collaborate on an iCloud library with up to six people, and then you can all add images, delete them, or share them. If you're an Android guru, you'll most likely know that Google's Photos has had this feature for years and lets you create a shared album with an unlimited amount of people. Even people that you don't know can join in on the album. Apple takes it a step further though because they also integrate this feature within their camera app, which I thought was very smart. You toggle on the shared library button and whenever you snap a photo, it'll instantly get shared in the collaborative photo albums. I really hope Google does something like this in the future. Apple Mail got plenty of features that Gmail already has. They're honestly not even worth mentioning though because they're so basic and standard, so I'll just throw them on the screen for you to pause and read. 
And finally, Siri has gotten so many cute updates that are pretty boring, which Google Assistant has added for the longest. You can now use your voice to add emojis within messages, send messages automatically without confirming, and even hang up phone calls. Anyways, that's a detailed comparison of iOS 16 versus Android 13 Beta 3. It's probably the most detailed comparison on YouTube, so a huge thumbs up for that. And it's pretty obvious that Apple has done a lot more for their platform with this update than Google has done for theirs. I think Android 13 was just more for polishing up and cleaning up what they started with their more extensive Android 12 update. And iOS 16 was just a huge step in trying new things out and seeing if they would stick. And so far, it's looking like people really enjoy it. All the links to update to each software, it's honestly not that hard to figure out. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because I put so much effort into these videos and I don't want to disappoint you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in as well and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!